Hello and welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Over the course of the next few videos, we're going to show you how to go from uh, labeling data to training a YOLO V2 um, deep learning detector and deploying it to an NVIDIA Jetson TX1. Uh, so to get things started off, I've got I've got Neha with me. Neha's the new deep learning person on our student competition team. Uh, hello, Neha. I believe this is your first uh, Robotics Arena video, right? Yes. Oh, well, welcome to the Robotics Arena. Thank um, you. Uh, so ne Neha's going to ha help us go over what are the different steps involved with 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 uh, with labeling and, and, and training and deploying um, uh, deep learning detectors for, for, for your applications. Okay, let's start diving into in, into the, the, the the first part of our workflow, which is which is data pre-processing, right? Um, for for the purposes of, of this demo and, and these few videos, we, we've got a um, a data set. Our friends from the Robotics Association at Embry Riddle um, and their Robo Sub team were kind enough to provide us with um, that, that, that we have gone and posted up to this Google Drive uh, repository that you can download and and and, and get started with, with with the video. So once you go up to Google Drive and download the folders, you should see a folder structure like this show up in your um, in, in in your current folder. We want you to have it this way because our our code is built to to, to work with, with these kind of folders. Um, we can take a look at, at, at some of the images that, uh, that were provided to us. So if we go ahead and open this outside MATLAB, what we see here is, is pictures of, of buoys from, from the RoboSub competition. So for those of you who are taking part in RoboSub, you are pretty familiar with, with, with these kind of elements. Um, our, our data set contains multiple images like this. Uh, all right. So let's let's go ahead and 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 dive into our our data pre-processing step in in the workflow. So um, you want to to download the data. You want to make sure that it's in that RoboSub footage um, uh, folder in and that folder structure that, that we spoke about. Um, uh, the next step that's involved in data pre-processing is image resizing. Um, so yeah, I, I know in the process of us developing this um, this demo, we we spend a lot of time actually resizing the images. Uh, can you tell us why image resizing is important for for deep learning? Yes. So uh, basically, we do image resizing in mostly every network, but here we are using YOLO v2 architecture. Okay. So YOLO v2 is designed in such way that it works best with the image res uh, image size of 416 by 416 by 3. Gotcha. And uh, what images we got, it was a very high resolution images and with more than 1063, 1063 into 3. Okay. And uh, so we resized the images to 416 by 416 by 3 so that YOLO v2 architecture plays best with these images. And also later on we'll be talking about in the deployment phase that our output from the camera should also be of the same image size. Because because that's the size that your network is expecting. Yeah. So yeah. what what would happen if we if we gave the network a, a larger size image? So first the uh, you would see like when I was doing this I also observed this thing that uh, your network will not run perfectly. Reason being the anchor so Yula V2 architecture also have the concept of anchor boxes okay. that I will be talking about in the next video. So that anchor boxes are also affected due to the size of the gotcha. video. Okay. So YOLO V2 architecture best performs with this size of image. Okay. And uh, so the the, the, uh, the data set that, that we've provided you through that, uh, that 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 Google Drive link has already been resized. We've done that to make it easier for us to share because because then the, the size of the data isn't isn't as large. Uh, so we don't necessarily need to run this this section of code for this particular demonstration for our data that we have, but uh, this this is a step that you would have to take when, when you're designing your own networks and working with your own data sets. All right. Um, the next step that we go through is, is actually splitting the folders. Now, uh, for those of y'all that are familiar with deep learning, you know that we need to have we need to have multiple data sets on which want to train and, and then and then and then validation. So, uh, uh, is is there a particular method to this to the splitting folders madness going on here? Yeah. So the best way, like, so the concept why we split the folders is because we don't want the network to like what, during our testing phase, we don't want our network to see all the data that we already have. Gotcha. So we train on a training set and then we divide into testing and validation. So validation set we work with like if you want to change the parameters or if you want to like do any experiment with our network. Once we are happy with the validation set, testing uh, set is the set that goes at the end, the last phase, so that we can see okay how our network is good with the unseen images. Okay. And the here we are what we are doing, we are randomly dividing the data set and with the random images because so that every time it ran it 
also like shuffles the images and gives a random output uh, okay. to the so, different so, so, the, so, the, so basically it's, it's helping it's helping make sure that your data is your net your um, your network is not getting overfit to a particular yeah. data set okay yes. cool awesome so well, once we've assembled our data into training testing and validating folders again we, the, the data that we are sharing with you all has already been been uh, arranged in, in in those particular folders uh, the next thing you want to do is, is you want to create ground truth right uh, ground truth is um, and, and we, we've, we've done some videos on this in the past and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this but but basically what ground truth is ground truth is um, results that you have made through observation right uh, so uh, in our particular case it would mean going into all those images and actually having labels on there mm. right so uh, what what we have done is I, I, if if i if i run this section of code um, i'm i'm going to show you a ground truth labeling session that we've used um so what we see in here is is this is our, our, our entire training folder and, and, and we've, we've gone ahead and, and, and labeled these um, if you see what we've used here is, is we've used a few custom algorithms uh, custom automation algorithms to, to, to label these images there are some other videos in the description that you can take a look at on, on how we actually did all this but but if, if we if we go and step through the images we'll see that we've got a bunch of a, a, a bunch of labeled images with 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 the objects of, of interest. So what at, at the end of this, at the end of these four videos, we're going to create a a multi a multi class object detector that can identify things like nav gates and, and the different buoys, uh, the, 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 uh, the labels of which you can see up here. Quickly, as 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 I as I walk through this code, we see that we're we're launching the the, the labeler app with this pre labeled session in there. In there, you can go and open it up on, on your own time to see what it looks like. Um, and, and I've also added some information here on, on, on how you can use these custom automation algorithms. Uh, again, th 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 there are other videos on this that you can take a look at, um, but, but this is just code that you can use for, uh, for that particular process. Now, once we're done with, 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 with labeling our entire data set, we can go and export these labels as a ground truth data object. So we can go ahead and ex export, export them to the workspace. Uh, let's just give it the ground truth name for now. Um, and, uh, if you go back into MATLAB, uh, we should see our workspace now contains a ground truth, um, a, a ground truth data object. Uh, so, so, what is a ground truth data? Object? So, uh, the, the, the the ground truth data object is a is a special MATLAB data object which which holds uh, it, it holds a bunch of information. Some of it including the um, uh, uh, the source locations for, for for all the data that we have. So that would be our our our, our RoboSub footage folder. Uh, as well, it is also it also contains uh, information about the different kinds of labels, so label descriptions, as well as the the actual bounding box locations of of the labels in in each image. Okay, so th th there's a lot of useful information there that we're going to use further down the road to to, to actually go ahead and train our detector, right? Uh, but so. Uh, so part of preparing preparing that data for us to, to, to actually train the detector is to convert the ground truth object into into training validation and and, and testing data. Um, now our, our MATLAB functions, uh, our MATLAB training functions, we'll see in, in the next video, accept data in in a particular format. So if, if we go ahead and run this code, um, you'll see what I mean. Um, the the uh, the sort of meat of this of, of this code is this object detector training data function and what this does is it 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 takes in your your, your ground truth object that you've created and um, and it it basically samples a particular a particular amount of of data depending on on this sampling factor value that you put in here and it'll it'll create this table so we've got a training data table if we scroll through this we see that it's got the image file name so this is this is the actual location and um, and and the different and the different labels and, and and bounding boxes that we have so as you can see for the first few images we only have nav gates which sort of reflects what we saw earlier um, in the app and then as you as you scroll through you, you'll see that, that, that there'll be bounding boxes for the for the other kinds of labels as well one thing that you need that you need to keep in mind is the, the ground truth data object stores uh, stores your source locations as absolute parts. So in, in in our case, since we've actually developed all our all of this code on this computer that we're recording on, um, it does not throw us an error. But when you try to use this code, it the, the, because the, the the ground truth data object that that we've loaded have been saved with absolute parts for our computer. You have to adjust those parts for for for, for your own computer. And to help you with this, we, we've got this adjust ground truth parts file. Um, so I, I highly recommend the first time that you that you download this code and run it, just just make sure that you run this file at the start, which will help you adjust all the parts for your computer. So now that we've we've run this section, we we see that we have three tables saved in our workspace: the test data, training data, and validation data. Okay. Uh, in in the next video, we're actually going to go ahead and, and use these tables to, to 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 train our detector. So so stick around for the next video. Um, 
in, in the meantime, if you if you need any if you need any help, you can get in touch with us through our our, our Facebook group and our um, our email address. So stay tuned for another episode, and we'll see you soon.